In this video, I'm going to share with you a thrift haul at Goodwill in Los Angeles. This was before my trip back to my hometown, San Francisco, so I have to actually do a lot of catch up. Stay tuned for the end of this video to find out what sale that I think about most often. Welcome to my channel, La Vie Vintage Rose. I thrift in Los Angeles, and I also thrift in San Francisco, my hometown. This haul was actually uh, a two-day haul. This is a big thrift store, so I actually went back two days in a row. One of the things I saw in a cart were these two vintage board games. And I never saw these before, so I thought it might be worth something. But when I checked the comps, I saw that these games are very common and I put them back. But one of the things that I was able to find was this 1970s crazy quilt. It's a uh, big quilt. It's actually, it's for a long twin. I didn't know that they had a size called twin long. But anyway, um, I did pick that up. I haven't sold it yet. These vintage crazy quilts do sell. And most of the quilts that sell are smaller than mine. So I do have mine priced at $119. The quilt did have a little damage to the back. And I might have to come down to around $100. But I do have watchers on the quilt. The quilt is very heavy, actually. Who knew that polyester was so heavy? Oh my goodness. I've inserted some images of some quilts that sold recently on eBay. Found these Ron White shoes, uh, which they do sell at Nordstrom's. They're supposed to be pretty comfortable high heel shoes, and they are on the expensive side. These were quite new, um, not very worn at all, and in very good condition. It's uh, an embossed suede material. I've inserted some sold images. This wooden box is very nice. It could very well be modern, new, uh, made-to-look vintage box. Uh, unfortunately, I left it uh, at the bottom of the shopping cart, which I think I've done that at least twice. I've left items that I was planning to purchase on the um, shopping cart. But um, here's a book that I probably shouldn't have bought because it's actually a heavy book. It's a big book. But the book was only $2.99, so I always imagine that I'm going to read it and then I'm going to sell it, but it actually never works out like that. So, but I did buy that book and it sells for only around $10. So I'll probably, I might get around to reading this one actually. So here's the belts that I bought. Uh, most of these were kind of a medium small, um, which is my size. I guess I could wear a few of them if, if they don't sell right away. I wasn't finding anything initially, so I went to the belts and started looking and they were all on sale. I guess most people don't look at the belts, so a lot of them were on sale. All of them actually were either 50 or 25% off. I know when I'm looking for a belt that goes with my outfit, I'm not going to go hunting. I usually don't go by foot to go look for it in the stores. It's hard to find the right belt if you're not looking for your basic black and brown. So I just decided to grab all these belts. They were all leather. If I sell one of them, I'll make all my money back. They're not for every single outfit, but certainly if you're looking for something for a particular look, I know when I'm looking at belts, I do look on eBay for belts and I have found uh, the exact belt that I'm looking for. So this is my um, look through before I make my purchases. This is a Pierre Cardin Hawaiian shirt. And here are some sewed comps. They don't sell for a lot. These two sweaters I did put back. I didn't get them because they were actually kind of priced up a bit. I noticed a lot of things at 
Goodwill is now averaging $9.99 to about $14.99. I even saw one used dress. It was priced at $16.99. So I didn't get these two sweaters. I put those back. I did get much of these men's athletic wear. For some reason, the store just had a lot of men's athletic wear. A lot of these were in very nice condition and really good brands as well. So that is the Under Armour. This is an ESPN athletic jersey top. And it could be for new subscribers, for people that subscribe to their channel. This is a Cloud9 athletic jersey. And they actually sell for quite a bit of money. I've inserted some sewed cops here. I hadn't seen this brand until I went to list the item. I'm glad I got it. Uh, it's really colorful. And there's a lot of corporate sponsors on the back of the shirt. Cycling jerseys are available everywhere now, including at Target so they don't bring in as much money as they used to. I used to be able to sell biking jerseys that even had several snags in them that were sort of worn. Some athletes, they want to affiliate with certain colors or they want to affiliate with certain companies or brands. And so they will get the jersey if it's something that they relate to. And here are some sewed comps. This shirt I left it behind. It was not on sale and it was marked up a little bit. I did get this Under Armour shirt. It's the same color as UCLA actually. This cycling jersey, I did put back. It had a lot going on. It might be a good look for some people, but I put it back. This Adidas athletic jersey, I thought it would be worth more, but when I ran the comps, it was selling for only around $15. So I did put that back. As I mentioned earlier in the video, this is one of the things that I sold when I was a newbie that I regret selling. I couldn't find anything when I ran the comps, so I shouldn't have just sold it for, I think I sold it for under 30 and with shipping $30. So I accepted an offer and I told her that I would take her offer, but I would charge her, you know, such and such for shipping. I did price that item incorrectly. I couldn't find comps, so I just sewed it, which I shouldn't have done because it's so unusual. I remember even when I bought it, I saw that it was very unusual. It has an Asian influence. It also is made in Hawaii. Um, it has boho vibes, and it also is vintage, authentic, from the 1970s. This is a very unusual maxi dress. And the cool thing about it is that it has a slit in the front. So the slit actually goes up to the waist. So the person wearing this would wear black leggings or black pants underneath it totally a hippie, you know, cool chick vibe. And the lady that bought it for me, she hurried and paid for it before I even updated shipping. So I just had to message her and ask her to pay me that additional amount for shipping when I accepted her offer. But she, uh, she kind of gave me a little bit of a comeback and, you know, I had to correct her and let her know that I told her that the shipping was going to be increased and she just paid for it before I updated the shipping. 
and I told her that it was heavy because it is a maxi length item. So she was going to have to pay the additional, you know, eight dollars or whatever it was. So, but anyway, that's the one item that I wish I didn't、uh, sell at that price. I think I could have gotten maybe even two hundred dollars for this item, and it would have been fun just to see how much someone would pay for this because it's so unique. When I go thrifting, I keep hoping that I might find something like it, or I might find that exact item again. But of course, I'm not going to find that item again.、Um, when I was in San Francisco, I did find a dress similar to this,、um, but it was just a, a summer style maxi with spaghetti straps, and the material was similar, but it was in pinks and summer spring colors. So certainly, it didn't have the awesome vibe this dress has. But thank you for watching and subscribe to my channel because I'll be posting part two of when I went back to this Goodwill for the women's clothing and thrifting when I was in San Francisco.